Hello everyone, this is White Wolf. I hope the internet connection is good. Let me know if the internet connection is good as people are cycling through the feed. So just let me know if the internet connection is good before I proceed because I want to do this live and talk about projecting consciousness, making our projections clear and how we're just projecting our truth instead of projecting a false nature, but also projecting just consciousness, just truth, and just resonance. So when you find a way to always project what you want, you'll tap into more prosperity because you're actually speaking towards something that is going to elevate the energy, you're changing your vocabulary, you're changing the direction, and you're also changing the configuration of energy and making yourself perceive truth and perceive consciousness as a way of projecting what you want. So every time that we're subtracting or adding within our life or changing the energy or changing the direction of our life, we're trying to figure out how to find a system that works for us, but also that gives us that allowance to receive. And as we're receiving, then we start projecting something else. And as you develop this sense of giving and receiving, then you allow yourself to really project what you actually are. And then you start confirming what you are and going and purifying where you're coming from instead of where you're going. And every time that we see ourselves as a projection of consciousness, we're seeing ourselves as energy. And we're seeing every concept every time that we talk about manifestation, law of attraction, law of attraction, and seeing ourselves in electromagnetic kinetic source energy field, we're seeing ourselves as a projection of consciousness, pure state of enlightenment, but seeing ourselves as inseparability. And as we see ourselves as that, we see everything that we're projecting, everything that we say, every time we have an action or a decision, we're transcending our human condition. We're transcending the suffering that we're experiencing and we're able to heal and then move on from it. So every time that you become a projection of consciousness, you're allowing yourself to see the truth of all that there is instead of focusing on what you don't have, on what it is not but focus on what it could be more. How can I project in such a way that my affirmations start becoming true? That how can I make my meditation so powerful that it makes me feel as if I'm astral projecting into the heavens and making sure that I'm having that direct perception and that direct river connection with source. So I'm projecting that love, that faith, that light, and that abundance within myself because it allows you to see that everything has a course, a generation of energy. Everything is a projection of your own consciousness. You right now looking at me through the screen, you're not looking at me through this screen. You're not even seeing the trees, but you're seeing consciousness. And that allows us to stop questioning everything within our life and we see the mystery, but we also see what we can build upon and how we can develop the momentum and how we can develop the sense of sense and sensibility, but also coherence. When you allow yourself to see yourself as a projection of consciousness, then you are that truth. You're that absolute reality that's wanting to know you. And then you start to blend a non-physical essence and a physical essence and also a psychological essence within yourself. And you're understanding that you find the truth within yourself and knowing it for what it is and you don't question it, you don't waver in it, you have that faith within yourself, and you have that stability to know that everything is coming into balance. Everything is following and coming into sync with who, with who you really are. Just know yourself, don't question it, just follow through. Sometimes it's just about the follow through. It's not about getting there, it's not about setting it up, but sometimes if you just follow through and you finish, and you have a strong finish, it's like you could be playing a basketball game you could be playing in a pickup game and you lose the entire time. But that third or fourth quarter picks up and you start to get in a groove and you start to get that fluctuation of energy and then you have a better follow through and a better finish. It's not about your start because we all start from a place, we all start from our past, our past traumas, what we're healing and also an impure heart. But we tap into purity and have a purified ego and the ability to say, I can literally project what I want. But why am I not projecting onto the projector screen of creation and allowing myself to just project what I want? So project what you want. Put your car, put your prosperity, put everything in your life and place it within that progression of energy and find that groove in that system that allows you to check off 
what you want to do and what you want to accomplish. So seeing yourself as a projection of energy is seeing yourself as the higher power, as the higher self, as God reflecting back into itself. So you understand by this progression of energy, by this understanding, by allowance, when you have complete allowance, that means you're always projecting what you want. Okay? So every time that you're projecting what you want, then that means that you're calling yourself to the calling. You're calling yourself to the direction that you want, but also you're allowing yourself to generate that signal. And then you're allowing yourself to basically fine tune how your thought process works. So you can allow yourself to develop a train of thought that works with the polarity of positive and negative. Because every time that you do this, you have certain patterns within your thoughts. You have certain ways that you think. You have certain ways that you feel. So it depends on you how you feel, but also it depends on how you think. It depends on what you're speaking about and also how you're using your energy. Some people don't know how to use their energy and some people don't know how to protect their blessings. But sometimes people are tainting their blessings and you don't need to do that either. But know that you are the blessing. Know that you're the blessing that wants to be birthed from you and know that you're the blessing that's carrying this entire segment out. So if you see yourself as blessed, you walk as if you're blessed. If you know yourself as anointed, know that you're anointed and walk in it and have firm honor and take that honor over your emotions because your emotions are part of it. But when you have complete honor and you have complete alignment and you absolutely know who the fuck you are, then you don't waver in it because it's a consecrated faith. It's a concentrated, aligned, focus, and direct, and it gets right to the heart of the matter, and it doesn't have to waver in any sort of way. So just always get to the heart of the matter and just allow yourself to always pierce the veil of amnesia that we're going through. It doesn't matter if somebody wants your gifting. It doesn't matter if they're jealous. It doesn't matter because they are not you. And that's what makes you special. That's why everybody individually is channeling their autonomous knowledge. And that's why a lot of you are sharing and speaking with authority. Because when you speak with authority, you're channeling from your state of resonance and you're going with your gut instinct and you're allowing yourself to have a constant reception on how you want to feel at all times. So every time that you do this, every time that you walk that fine line and knowing that every single day is trying to trip you up, it's trying to test you, but it's building that resiliency. And a beautiful question by Amanda, why do others like to bring my confidence down? It's because they're projecting what they feel about themselves. Think about that. Every time that someone tries to suck the life out of you, every time they they say that oh, I can't do this and I can't do that and you can't do this and you can't do that. They're saying that about themselves. So we have to change the way we think. We have to change the way we feel and we have to change the way that we use our words of wisdom. That's why I always talk to you guys about switch words, changing your vocabulary, changing your sentences, changing your routine, and also just changing the way that you feel right now at this exact moment and keeping it very true and keeping it very clear and direct over what you want and what you want to breathe within to this existence. Every time that you focus on the dial and you have your eye on the bullseye and you just align to the vision until the vision becomes who you are and then it starts to fall into place and then there's representation. But then there was an origination of that spiritual essence of that consciousness being breathed through you. And then it allowed you to follow your heart's desire and then your desires become more pure, but then it allows you to be more excited and it allows you to change the intention. So it allows you to understand that I'm not here. I am positionless. I am the mystery. I am the consciousness that's birthing everything within my reality. So you have to understand that you're the consciousness that's birthing everything inside of your reality. That means that you're an astral projection into the physical plane of embracing that living, breathing Akashic record that you are. You are a psychic palace. You are a living, breathing Akashic record with so many tools in your arsenal, with so much power, with so much energy, 
with so many avenues to create, but also to generate. And then that's why you have those different energetic combinations. So when you hold on to it, allow yourself to always receive it and know that it's there. Don't think that you are not doing something very special or important. Like when everybody's more of service to a lot of different people, just know that the healing is healing. Just know that the words of wisdom are helping and just know that it's just a guidance mechanism and it's a source of guidance that's allowing you to pull from your own source of creation because we become a guide. We become a guidance system and then we become different ways of mechanically healing. That's why I always talk about worthiness. That's why I always talk about really just smiling, having a great day, not just having a good day, but have a great day. It's just changing something very simplistic, something very little, and then allows you to change the flavor or the definition or the expression of how you are going about it. That's why you have to have divine expression. If you change your vibrational attitude into a good one, then you'll become more aligned. If you change the way that you perceive a certain emotion, then you'll change the way that you ultimately feel. If you change the way that you feel towards money and you actually play with it, then you will have a better relationship with money. But it's the way you're projecting. It's the way that you're going about it. And there's a million billion different angles to go from. And just because I give you a certain way does not mean that's the way that you have to go. But if you hear it and it works for you and then you want to flow to that, then that means that you are divinely tapped in. That means that you are receptive, but it means that you're a listener. The only way that we project properly is that we listen. And we get quiet and we get grounded and we get centered. And every time that something comes up and there's some sense or form of distortion or an illusion to see through, we have the ability to create another illusion that changes the optics, changes offense and defense, but it changes the scope of reality on how we perceive it and receive it. So whenever you're like nervous, if you're not, if you're breathing too fast, then you're going to be nervous about something. But if you kind of slow it down and you take that breath in and then you let it out very, very slowly and you allow yourself to find that presence within that, then when you're able to dissect why you are nervous, why you have anxiety, why you have hatred within yourself or judgment, then if you allow yourself to literally stop thinking, but also just receive and just feel and just awaken You'll have tears, you'll have an awakening experience, and the divine will work on your behalf because we all need divine assistance. We're becoming that divine assistance, but everybody needs that divine assistance within themselves because it gives you a different way to look at your life, a different way to perceive your life, but also a different way to channel your life because you are a channel of the divine and you're channeling your life and you're projecting everything. And you're rejecting anything that goes against the absolute truth. It's almost as if you're ignoring it, even if it's trying to scream at you in the face or if it's trying to step on your toes. You're just absolutely unfazed by what comes up into your peripheral. It could be walking all around you and then you just say, like, get the fuck away from me. And then you allow everything to subside and then everything calms down and you remain within that energy. So the entire point of this live is remaining in your field of expertise, but remaining in your field of energy because you are an energetic force field of electromagnetic kinetic source energy. So projecting properly is projecting your energy, projecting your love, your faith, your prosperity, whatever it may be, manifestation, subtraction, it doesn't matter. But seeing it as conscious, seeing it as energy, and not seeing it as an obstacle or a concept or a word search or a guessing game, that will allow you to seek out the mystery and not only question yourself, but find the answers that you're looking for. You have to be that intuitive investigator 
because that leads to the seeking impulse that leads to the drive that leads to everything that you're trying to find and trying to accumulate that mass within your body, that light body, because you can't have other distortions or blockages within yourself to be that essence that you want to become. So every time that you level up, you're letting go of something. Exclusion is inclusion. And then you start to reject everything and you start to confirm what you actually are and you start to project everything proactively instead of reactatory. Because as humans, we're prone to react. We're prone to react to this. Or if somebody says that, then it ruins our day. Or if somebody, or if there's $500 taken out of our bank account, it's always testing us to see how we're going to react. Every time that I do one of these lives, I remember countless times after I gave a message, a truthful message, and then I had that truth reflected back to me instantaneously. And it was almost like, oh shit, I need to check myself before I wreck myself. A dog throws up on the floor or something like that. And then it's reflecting back to you that you need to honor your messages and also honor what you say. And also with the flame and the passion and the fire that's in you to just stick with it and to not say what people want to hear but say what's needed and do what's needed, even if it seems or makes you look like a terrible person, which that is further and farther from the truth. So when you're growing and you're sharing and you're shedding those layers and you're maturing spiritually, you start to tolerate less. You start to tolerate so much less. It doesn't mean that you're impatient. It actually means that you have more patience but you're just intolerant to the deafening of your vibration. That means that you're listening better and just not allowing it and not having any tolerance to the things that are hindering your vibration. And it's freeing. It feels very good when you do that. When you do that and it just channels out the world for just a second so that you can focus on the world that's inside of you. Because at the end of the day, you are the world at large. And if everybody maintains their energy and maintains their frequency and allows themselves to be aligned to this truth and to this love, then everybody's coming back into unity and they're coming back into sync with who they really are and not this false projection of this human being in this name that you've adopted. You assume that you're this name and you assume that you're this body, but you're really this, this little particle accelerator and all these subatomic particles and cells and organisms and configurations of energy that's being created like a little mustard seed of creation. And then it blooms and it blossoms and it turns into the entirety and the creation of light. So you're just that little projection of consciousness. You're like the Big Bang Theory, you know, when they talked about the Big Bang Theory. I do believe that we are like that. I don't think it necessarily happened that way. But we are kind of like that when we incarnate here because we're just that little speck and then we turn into a person and then we experience everything that we've ever experienced before we experience it, but we forget so that the journey is laid before us. So then we're able to understand it and adopt it and get out of the indoctrination of being human because we are indoctrinated. We're we're subjected to feeling like an object or feeling like we can't live our best lives. And that's why we change our projections. That's why we change the way that we feel, the way that we think, the way that we perceive and the way we channel our energy. Because if you're not channeling your energy properly and you're wanting to work on people, then you're doing it for all the wrong reasons. And it's just being connected and being connected in a way that you know it's coming from a genuine source of energy so that you can be a mass channel of this divine cosmic energy that supersedes everything, that surpasses all understanding. And it's freeing because it gives you growth. It gives you something to look forward to. It gives you a sense of direction because if you don't have a sense of direction, then you're not gonna know where to go. And if you always feel into that and you always go with your gut and your heart and you always go with what's truthful and what's more beneficial and what's going to elevate your path 
then that means that you're not attached to people, places, and things. That means that you're always a genuine source of energy that will always go with the pulse and always go with the shift and the vibration that wants to emulate itself. So right now, you're all projecting me into this awareness. You're not the person that's looking at me through the camera, but you're the consciousness that projected this camera and this phone and these trees and myself and my hat and my shirt. You're the one who projected that into the awareness before you even knew that it was gonna happen. That's why everything is so mysterious. So we don't realize, we feel like, because every time that we're manifesting something, we feel like it doesn't matter if it's a relationship, you were calling that person into your life. And another thing that was interesting, and I'm gonna do healing energy, so stay tuned. As you're watching this live, I'm gonna be doing some healing energy clearing thought processes. So um, stay tuned. But our dogs, our animals, call us before we call them at any given moment. Our animals are more psychic than we are. They're more gifted in a telepathic way. And they clear the energy on our floors. That's why we have them. That's why they lay on the floor. And it's seeing that the energies that we're projecting are from different dimensions, but they're also from a different density of consciousness when we're shifting into that. So a lot of people are coming from the sense of love, but now they're coming into understanding and love, and then it's harmony. So fifth is like love and understanding, and sixth is you know, unity and harmony, and finding that balance within yourself to be a balanced entity of love and light. So I wanted to answer this question. What if you realize how wrong you were when you were manifesting? How do you change that? It's not a sense of right or wrong. That's the first thing that you have to get on top of. It's not a sense of right or wrong. You can't do something right or wrong. There are no mistakes. They're just happy accidents. It's learning. It's not realizing that you're wrong. It's just you were focusing on a negative energy or you were focusing on the outcome of the direction or the details or how it came together. So it's not a sense of being right or wrong, but it's a sense of changing the way you think, changing the way you feel, and changing the meaning and the significance of what you're channeling and what you're wanting to project into everything. That's really all that it is. It's not just love and light your way out of everything, but it's just changing the way you think and think how God thinks about you. Not what you think. So it's not about just how you think that you're right or you're, that you're wrong. It's thinking how God perceives itself. Because seeing through the biggest illusion is to see God within yourself and within everything that you're going through. So that means that you just have to change the way that you vibrate. And changing the frequency, changing the configuration in the system and the the emulation of wanting to become that light. So as you change that, you change the way that you are. You change the way that makes you honorable. You become the indescribable, indestructible source of creation. That means that it can't be distorted, it can't be destroyed. It is and it lives on forever, it's infinity. It's the Oracle of Love, Line, Wisdom, which is the individuation of how God was created and birthed everything into existence. The world will never stop ceasing to exist unless God wanted it to not exist. But the world is always continuous. That's why we have infinite number of parallel realities and experiences and emotions and thought processes and Also, different aspects of ourselves that are in different realms, planes, and universes, the monad, the I am presence. So the world will never stop and cease to exist. But it's realizing that you are the existence that gives that breath of fresh air every single day. And you just have to make that decision. Do I want to be the superhero of my life? Do I want to do the most heroic thing with nobody watching, doing the most aligned thing when it seems tough, doing the most ambitious, scary thing that everybody tells me and tries to talk me out of. And you just fucking do it. And you don't, you don't waver in it. You don't question it. 
You don't say, ah, oh, you don't hesitate. You just fucking do it. And you don't, and you don't care. It's the art of not caring does not mean that you don't have compassion within yourself. It just means that you don't care about things that waste the configuration of energy. That doesn't waste time. Even though we don't have time, but the way that we use our time is what makes it very valuable. The way that you use your time, the way that you use your energy. And wanting to be more of service with this love and this truth that's inside of us so that we can transcend and reset the karmic balance. Have a cosmic reset. It's kind of like with the men in black. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie where they, that's basically what happens when we awaken. They kind of give us this thing. Um, or that's what they do before we awaken. Let me, let me formulate it in that way. They had that thing above you and it clicked and then it erased your memory. But then you discover that past, future, present is all happening simultaneously. That means that you are the simultaneity. That means you are the realities that you're seeking. You, it's seeking the divinity within yourself. It's not finding it with another person. It's not looking at it for me because you are God and I am because you are. It's a very deep message. I am because you are and you are because I am. Think about that. Ponder it when you meditate. That means that everybody is coming into that honor and that love and that tranquility and that inseparability within themselves. And it allows you to see us as brothers and sisters and see ourselves as free will. Not, not anything else, not bullshit, not fake, but just real. Reality itself, finally tapping into reality, not a false reality. So I also have an announcement. Um, we're going to do some healing energy. Um, <laughs> I know that was quite a bit um, as you're re receiving that. I hope you guys are receiving the message and enjoying the live. But I'm going live at midnight uh, to do readings, healings, activations, codes, downloads, just like, share, and gift. Also, you can book private sessions, $70 for one hour, $60 for an hour for healing, activation codes, downloads, Akashic records, and things of that nature. And also... You guys can receive later if you guys are up for it. And also I have a couple of clients. So I hope my phone is not going to get overheated before I do the healing energy. So I'm going to probably just get right to it. Okay. Uh, Eastern time zone. I almost forgot. Thank you for reminding me. Eastern. So we're going to do this healing energy and we're going to clear thought processes. Okay. So I want you to really focus on your causal chakra. And I want you to focus on the pineal gland and the third eye. Okay, and I also want you to focus on the throat chakra more because we have to speak it, we have to think it, and we have to have that direct source of creation coming down, which is the river of source, which floods your being so that you're pure, so that you are like water, my friends. Be like water, be that purification. So, thank you guys for watching, and thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you all. <laughs> that was funny. Activate your ears. And also we're going to activate the causal chakra, the throat, and also the heart. So we're gonna clear thought processes, headaches, triggers, false emotions, 
false ways of projecting. Emoting in a proper way, using your emotions not as a doormat, but as a way of creation. Using your words as a way of wisdom and truth and resonance. Using your heart as your first brain because it pumps the blood, it allows the organs to flow and the mind to flow. So allow the heart to be the first brain and allow your mind to be the second but allow your body to be the spirit. The spirit of God is within you and the spirit of God is within me. So what is inside of me is inside of you too. And reflect that and emulate it in every honorable, respectable way. Just know that you are pulling your destiny towards yourself. As that electromagnetic kinetic source energy field, you're pulling that towards you. And you're allowing yourself to be the channeled message of the guide of the divine assistance that you want to become. You're using your love as a gateway and a permission slip to receive constantly. You're allowing your awareness to be coherence. And you're allowing your ways of projecting to give you flow. We're going to tap into the kundalini energy of release. So feel abrupt healing, rejuvenation, generation, and tapping into the absolute reality, the absolute truth. Allow the masculine and the feminine to be balanced. Allow yourselves to up a density of consciousness, love, and understanding. Archangels of love and light, who's one that cleanses of our auric field, tapping in the God source energy in the great I am, diving deep into middle mother Gaia earth, northeast, south, and west. Reprogram your DNA now. Be that autonomous knowledge. Channel from your own space. Channel from your own energy. Allow yourself to be a channel of the divine. and hold space for the entire collective. Allow your personality to change. Allow your entire life to unfold in front of you with complete allowance. Have acceptance beyond your wildest years. And knowing that you are the forgiveness that you seek, 
You are the love that you're seeking. And you are the God that is waiting to be manifested. And if you just choose it now, nothing will forever be the same like it was. And just be that little particle accelerator that turns into the manifestation of light, which gives life, which gives forgiveness, which gives redemption, and what gives you the freedom of your God will power to have free will always. Just know that the doors of heaven are laid at your feet, my friends. It's just choosing to take hold of the keys of your destiny and just run with it, go with it, and never look back. And just keep onward. Keep steady. Keep consistent and remain that full honor and integrity to your divine plan.
And that's how life is supposed to be, my friends. It's supposed to be like that. Not rough, not rigid, not conflicting, not argumentative, not right or wrong, projecting this and that. It's just being there and having the tended, tender-hearted nature, not tended, <laughs> tender-hearted nature to just allow the flow of energy. And that's how life is designed to be for all of you. So I want to thank you guys so much for this live. You guys make it possible. And I don't know if you guys seen my TikTok that I'm going live at midnight to do reading ceilings activation. And uh, yeah, um, uh, the divine has been telling me that you're going to make a session with me soon, Amanda. Um, just uh, book private sessions with me, Cash App, White Wolf, the Oracle. Also go to my YouTube channel, White Wolf, um, the Oracle. And BitChute, White Wolf, the Oracle, 23 underscore Assembol. Instagram, White Wolf, 4741. And TikTok, obviously, is my business page. So I want to thank you guys so much for tuning into this live and also just receiving, but also just uh, relaying to me and also just, you know, opening up your hearts to reception, knowing that you can always receive and the very fact that you're able to receive always is meaning that you have a constant flow of energy. If you're if you're listening, if you're receptive, if you're open and you just receive, it will always give you the ability to give more out of yourself and more out of your life and more out of the act of service. And I'm saying this with my leg being completely asleep. And it's like, it's like a vice grip right now. <laughs> So um, I'm going to have to help my uh, girlfriend uh, with a live that she's trying to do with another person. So I'm going to be leaving you guys. But thank you guys so much for receiving. And that was a very powerful live. And I love you guys. Thank you so much. God bless. And namaste.